Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of momentum. Have you ever noticed when you're very motivated to do something that you have momentum? You are eager for results and keep trying with motivation and zest. The problem is when we stop seeing results or the results are not consistent, we begin to slow down our momentum and it comes to a halt. The truth is results only come with momentum and constant effort. The moment we stop or become complacent, we give a signal to the universe that we don't want to accomplish our goals bad enough or that it's not worth the effort. This is when we see slim to no results. If you have a goal, be consistent with your efforts and keep the momentum whether or not you see results in the beginning. Give yourself time to see results and before you know it, all the hard work you put in will translate into an abundance of results. Successful people don't quit or stop until they reach their desired goal and even then they persist forward to tackle new challenges. Remember, if you want it bad enough, then momentum is the key to get you there. As Susie Kassam quotes, when you find yourself in the thickness of pursuing a goal or a dream, stop only to rest. Momentum builds success. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I want to talk a little bit about, you, you talked about your fragrance brand, um, Broke Room, so I want to talk a little bit about it and the process of creating a custom fragrance. Well, it's it's something between chemistry and alchemy. It's very, mm. it's a very, very interesting process. Um, I have a, a fragrance organ, which is basically a huge collection of different raw materials. Wow. And I have about 250 or 300 raw materials that I work with. And you know, some of them, some of them are have the deeper scents to them, the base notes. Some of them are are kind of in between, and the middle notes, and some of them are are at the top where you have this sudden kind of smell of something and then it goes away. Next up on the show, we have Anna Novakov, an entrepreneur based in New Mexico, known for her bespoke textile design business, Mala Igla. Her brand is dedicated to sustainably produced fabrics and zero waste production design with a small carbon footprint. Anna, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, how are you? I'm doing well. You know, today is actually a very special day. It's the 21st day of the 21st year of the year 2021. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it's a really it's special a lucky day. It's a lucky day and we have you on the show and I'm so glad. Um, I love your work. So let's just dive into it. I want to talk a little bit about your journey into entrepreneurship and your love for creation, whether it be textiles or fragrances. So let, let's talk about how you develop that passion. Well, it's it's something that that uh, I've always had that was always part of my kind of identity. Mm -hmm. um, but I went through a couple of major uh, career paths. Mm -hmm. So my first career path was actually in art history. Oh wow! And so I studied art history. I got a PhD in art history, wow. and then ended up teaching at the university for twenty years. Wow! And. Uh, just when I when I managed to get full professor and tenure and everything else, I decided I need a new challenge. And I, I love textiles and I love design. And so I just left and decided to start my own businesses. And yeah. I haven't looked back. Yeah. So I, I, I thought, you know, if the first 20 years was dedicated to academia, the next 20 years is going to be dated, devoted to all kinds of creative practices that I have always loved and always done kind of on the side because I had my day job. Mm -hmm. And now my day job is my full-time job, which I love. Mm -hmm. I love that, that you took the jump. You know, there are so many people that, you know, have a regular job and they want to be entrepreneurs and start their own business, but they have that fear. They just can't get over that fear to, you know, become a full-time entrepreneur. So I love that you said you didn't look back and, you know, here we are today. So I think that's amazing. I want to talk a little bit about your Serbian descent. How do you think that's influenced your work? Well, it's, it's it influenced me tremendously. I mean, I was born in the former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. uh, in Belgrade, mm -hmm. and um, that background and the connection to that particular city, which I still go and visit regularly, mm -hmm. is extremely strong. Uh, I speak Serbo-Croatian, 
and I think of myself very much as being part of that culture as well as part of American culture. Mm -hmm. um, the, my, my own background in terms of thinking about textiles goes through my maternal line. My mother was a seamstress mm -hmm. and she was a very accomplished seamstress and her, my, my grandmother and great-grandmother were both embroiderers. Oh wow. So I have that, that kind of feeling for textiles and fibers and color and things like that within my, my lineage. Mm -hmm. But also, since my mother was so involved with, um, with clothing and with sewing, she got me into fashion modeling at a very early age. Mm -hmm. So at the ripe old age of five, <laughs> she pushed me down the runway, which I can still remember. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about it was that I thought about clothing and textiles and garments early on because of how they felt. Mm -hmm. So the texture of a, of a garment, the texture of, a, of textiles now that I work with is still something that's very important. And I can kind of feel that going back to those very early days of, um, you know, being on the, on the little kitty runway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that, that, you know, every experience that, you know, we have in life kind of leads us to where we are now. So I love that everything that you're talking about right now has led you up to being an entrepreneur and starting these beautiful companies. You know, I had a chance to look through your work and each design is so intricate and bold and unique. So I want to talk a little bit about the creative process when you create and what inspires you. Well, I'm, I'm in constantly looking for, looking around and looking for things and I love uh, traveling, which of course is difficult to do now, and being mobile. So I'm influenced by all kinds of things. I'm interested in uh, street art. I'm interested in, in street fashion. I'm interested in all kinds of colors and designs that come from my Serbian background in terms of kind of ethnic embroidery and things like that as well as very modern things. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to be somebody that takes uh, a lot of notes, that takes a lot of photographs, so I'm always with my iPhone looking for you know little things that I might be able to use. And you never know when that's gonna come up and mm -hmm. when that's gonna be something that I can you know, access in the work. Mm -hmm. Also, I do a lot of uh, playing around with color in terms of working with watercolors or working with spray paint, which I really like to do, creating patterns that way, or thinking about, you know, any kind of material can become a potential pattern. So you can work with different colored tape, for example, is very nice, or different colored yarns that you would use and then photograph and then start to process. Mm -hmm. So the the day-to-day -day, uh, activities that I do are very, very varied. I really like working with collage and mm -hmm. that turns out to have a lot of impact on my work. So I, I use cutouts from, from magazines or I use cutouts of different you know, paper swatches that I find or different scraps of things that I, could, that I could find in terms of botanical materials. Those things sometimes turn into a pattern. Mm -hmm. So I collect these images, I create some kind of a pattern with them. Mm -hmm. Then I digitally photograph them and put them into Photoshop and Illustrator. Wow. So at that point, I start to play around with the, the textures, the patterns, and start to create a repeat so that wow. you can have you know, a, a bolt of fabric with a repeated pattern in it. And the changes that happen in it don't cease to amaze me. I mean, there's something about it that's just magical. And yeah. every time you do it, something new and fantastic comes out of it. So I really enjoy the process and it's something that I do virtually on a daily basis. Yeah, it's definitely magical because when you see your work, it's so intricate and, and unique. I've, I've never really seen any of the patterns that I've seen from your work anywhere else. So, and you could see why, because you have this creative process. There's a lot of work that goes into it and you get inspired by different things. So it's really unique to you. So I really love that. I want to talk a little bit about the significance of the names Mala, Igla and Rokrum because they're very unique. So what is the story behind these uh, brands? Uh, the the Mala Igla brand, which is the, the textile brand, the name comes from uh, a nickname that my grandmother had for me, which oh. means small needle. Oh. 
Okay. So she was the big needle. She taught me how to sew. And so she was the big needle and I was the small needle. So she would teach me. <laughs> wow. She would teach me how to do it. And I always thought it was, it was very cute of her. And then when I was thinking about a brand name, I thought, well, you know, I like that. It's concise. It kind of looks interesting because it has the same number of letters, but it also has some, you know, personal, personal significance to it. Nice. The fragrance brand comes from um, a couple of extended trips to the, um, the south of France, oh. where I stayed in a place called Rock Brun, uh, that is on the coast, is kind of near um, Monaco. And I like that that name, and I thought, well, you know, that would be interesting to kind of play around with that. So I took the first three letters of that and then combined it with R -A, R -A, a U M, which means room in German. So it's oh, just wow. kind of a, a play a play on words that, for me, had some kind of visual significance and. It also sounds kind of interesting, so. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking before <laughs> this, and I was saying that the names are so unique and interesting. So I knew there was a story behind them, and I love that they have personal significance to you. You know, what's really interesting about your company, and which I love, um, Mala Igla has sustainable produced fabrics um, and leaves a small carbon footprint. That's really important. So let's talk about, you know, why you were conscious of that and why that was important to you. Well, this is something that, that um, is also very personal in a lot of ways. Um, my father was uh, an atmospheric physicist, and he wow. was, his name was Tihomir Novakov, mm -hmm. and he was the person that started the, the, the name Black Carbon. Wow. And he, was, he started doing research on smog, on pollution, on, on climate change, all of these things in the 1970s before anybody was talking about it. So he was always very environmentally conscious. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up in Berkeley, California, so I was always had that sense of environmental consciousness and social responsibility. It was kind of built into the fabric of Berkeley, especially at that time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always uh, something that was very important. And it was always also one of the reasons why I didn't go into fashion design and I didn't go into anything that was um, kind of ready to sell mm -hmm. because there's a lot of um, pollution that's involved with that. I mean, the garment industry is one of the biggest polluters environmentally yeah, exactly. that there is. Mm -hmm. So I was very interested in, in figuring out ways to work with textiles that was completely bespoke and that also used organic uh, cotton that used alternative materials that used recycling co recycled cotton, um, vegan leather, things like that, that were very um, sustainable and had a very small carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So all of my products, I don't have anything that's kind of ready to go. All of my products are custom made. Mm -hmm. So I only make as much of something as the client wants. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing extra that's being created. There's no um, things that I stockpile afterwards or that I need to, to sell. And I think that as a business model is, is um, something that I really like. It, mm -hmm. has, it has both the environmental aspect to it and it's also kind of savvy uh, as far as a business goes because yeah. you lower your risk when you don't have a lot of inventory or any inventory. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everything is is really this kind of collaborative process between myself and the client. So they get exactly what they want, and I don't retain a lot of stuff on the, on my end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a win-win situation, and as well, your clients feel good probably that you know they're working with an eco-friendly brand that's conscious so I think that's really good and important speaking of being eco-friendly I know you're working on a project called Berlin um, Scorch Earth so let's talk a little bit about that project because I'm really interested to hear more about that that project is is part of a um, a larger uh, idea that came about about five or six years ago Mm -hmm. um, my partner Ron Hutt and I started this organization called Provisional Art Space, mm -hmm. and that uh, organization is a kind of um, cooperative. And what we do is we create environment, environmentally conscious art projects in different parts of the world, and all of those projects can be 
shipped electronically so we don't have you know the expense and the bulk and the and the the carbon footprint of ship, shipping a lot of things mm -hmm. so there's two large projects that we're working on that were supposed to happen this year but now have been pushed back to 2022 mm -hmm. one of them is called scorched earth and that one is um thinking about what's going on with the environment in terms mm -hmm. of not only global change but also the massive fires Mm. that have started to happen globally yeah. both so in brazil and california and different parts of the of the world and what that signifies in terms of human habitation of certain places the changes in temperature and the fact that these fires now are not for example in california they're not seasonal anymore but they're something that's actually happening now i mean in january there's fires going on in northern california a time where traditionally you would have rain and you would have you know you would not have fire season mm -hmm. at this late point in the year mm -hmm. so that's going to be a group exhibition that um invites different artists to submit videos and digital uh digital images that are related to the idea of global change and fires mm -hmm. the other big project is related to my father's work and that's it's called black carbon and it's going to be a show that um actually looks at the artists that have been influenced by his work wow. which I, I think is really interesting it turned I, I met this artist in Brooklyn for example who had a tattoo that was based on some of my father's uh, scientific projects mm -hmm. so he had that put onto his arm and I first came upon his work and thought well this would be an interesting interesting show so that's going to be a traveling show that's also um, all digitally downloaded so it's going to have some uh, physical presence in terms of screenings in, uh, in Serbia and in Berlin and in, um, in other parts of Europe. But it's also going to be available online on the Provisional Art Space uh, website. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make things as mobile as possible without actually having to travel. And mm -hmm. these projects came up, started about five or six years ago, so it was way before COVID. Mm -hmm. But um, we had this this feeling that you know the the old system for art, in particular, was having to ship things and having you know this tremendous footprint that was associated with it was kind of on its way out. And we wanted to to propose a new way of thinking about these things. Mm -hmm. So it turned out to be very um, kind of timely because of all the things, of course, that have happened in the last year. Mm -hmm. I love that you're using your brand to, you know, touch base on such important topics, you know, um, and as, as well as your father's work, you're inspired by that too, because, you know, right now, climate change is a major issue, and um, I don't feel like it's talked about and brands are doing enough, so I love that your brand is doing something about it, because we see climate change every single day you know we see extreme weather we see all these things but you know i like that you're actually using your platform to do something about it so congratulations on that that's really important and i and think I more and more uh interior designers are starting to think about eco designs for their mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. and i think that's just a fantastic you know trend that's starting off now and something that where you start to start thinking about things in a much more holistic way. Mm -hmm. How are all these things going to come together and how are we going to be, you know, a positive force mm -hmm. within our own within our society and within a global community? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And it's also great because you're using your passion to also, you know, use it as a platform for change, which I think is really good. Um, I want to talk about your success because I know Mala Igla is opening their second design studio in New York. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the growth in your company and the success you've had. Well, I think that the, the company now has been around for four years mm -hmm. and each year it's expanded and grown very uh, naturally. And I think that that's one of the one of the things when, when people are thinking about starting a new business or thinking about, you know, how, how can I become an entrepreneur? It's, it's much more of a marathon than it is of a sprint. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about things in, in the long haul and think about how, how you're going to grow your business in a very steady way. Um, I started thinking about how, you know, it, it came from at first working with people that were friends of mine. 
-hmm. So I would gift them things like, a, you know, let, let me design something for your, for your couch or for your home. And they really liked it. And I thought, well, this, this is kind of the beginning of a, of a business because you sort of start out very, very uh, tentatively. And as I started doing it, more and more people started to be interested in collaborating. Mm -hmm. And for me, the aspect of creating a business that you had a personal relationship with each of your clients is really important. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm creating products and then somebody else is trying to sell them. It's, it's much more of a day-to-day -day relationship between myself and clients who are also creative people. So whether they're individuals that want something you know, beautiful for their home or whether it's an interior designer working with their own clients. Mm -hmm. So each process is very, very unique and we, we develop these relationships where people start to come back mm -hmm. and they start to come back and ask you to do other things. So there's a, a natural kind of growth to it mm -hmm. that I think is a very good way to think about you know, developing a business. Um, the other thing that I think is very important is that people now especially are starting to think more about how to customize the things that they buy. So there's a lot less, as we, we're not going to stores very much, there's a lot less impulse buying and there's a lot more thought that's involved with any purchase that people make. Mm -hmm. So helping them to create the perfect interior for their home or the perfect you know, space for their, their new office is something that I really enjoy doing. And we start to get a kind of creative, uh, you know, relationship going. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's unique about my business is that no two people are gonna have the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So when I make a pattern for somebody or I make a fragrance for someone, no one else is gonna have that. Mm -hmm. So you take something that once upon a time was just for people that were extremely wealthy and you bring it to uh, a much more diverse audience where people can have an experience with an artist and they can get something out of it that's absolutely unique to them. Mm -hmm. So that process for me is something that's very, very satisfying. And it's now growing. I mean, I've started a relationship with a company now that manufactures uh, furniture and they manufacture bespoke furniture. So now not only can they buy the unique textiles, but they can also, you know, create a unique piece of furniture that would go along with it. Mm -hmm. So each step of the way through the, the business uh, process has been a growth and a growth in the direction that I was, you know, that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, you have to kind of stick to your guns and also what it is that you believe in. I mean, this furniture company that I started working with, every time they build something, uh, they plant a tree. Oh, nice. So there's a sense in which you're giving back and you're giving back to, um, to the environment each time that you construct something. And they use a lot of uh, sustainable materials, which is something that's very important to me. Um, mm -hmm. So there's the cyclical nature of it, I think is very important. And then you think about growing a business that is with, you know, contained within itself and can grow naturally and mm -hmm. is not harming anything or you know <laughs> trying not to harm anything in the meantime mm -hmm. I like the fact that you touch base on relationships because I think that's so important as an entrepreneur is to have great relationships with your clients because you can have a great product, but if people don't like working with you, you know, they're not going to come back. So I love that you said you have different relationships with your clients and artists. And I think that's been part of your success. And I also like the fact that you talked about being conscious of your brand and what you stand for, because I think with anything with any brand if you use it to be of service to the world in some way whether it's you know being eco-friendly or using it to speak about something you're passionate about i think you'll be successful so i think that has a big part of your success i want to talk a little bit about you you talked about your fragrance brands um broke room so i want to talk a little bit about it and the process of creating a custom fragrance well, it's, it's something between chemistry and alchemy. It's very, mm. it's a very, very interesting process. Um, I have a, a fragrance organ, which <laughs> is basically a huge collection of different raw materials. Wow. And I have about 250 or 300 raw materials that I work with. 
and you know some of them some of them are uh, have the deeper sense to them the bass notes some of them are are kind of in between and the middle notes and some of them are are at the top where you have this sudden kind of smell of something and then it goes away so um i create each fragrance through a process of creating a formula mm -hmm. that um you know when i'm working with someone they'll tell me well i like you know, what are the things you like? I like the smell after it rains, or I like the wow. smell of a certain type of rose, or you know, whatever it is. Hmm. So I try to get from them at least two different scents that they really like in nature, or you know, they can also be synthetic. It doesn't, you know, either one. And then I start from there to create some options for scents that would be both pleasing in terms of thinking about them as perfume or thinking about them as um, interior fragrances mm -hmm. and something that's very unusual and that's very much suited to the, the client. Mm -hmm. With that business as well, I make sure that all the materials that I use are sustainable materials and are not part of, there's a list of materials that are endangered that I do not use. Mm -hmm. So the materials themselves are very important to me. And you know, this process, which Often it takes you know, quite a bit of time. You go back and forth with someone to try to figure out you know, exactly which scent uh, would be right for them. So I started off by making perfumes, and then um, some of the the people that I was working with in interior design said, "Well, can you make a, a fragrance for this particular house that I'm designing, or oh. can you make a fragrance that I could use as a gift to clients at the end of a of a project?" So it really started to blend together as these two separate businesses, but I really think of them as sister businesses mm -hmm. because they're very much kind of interrelated with each other mm -hmm. and they, they both go back and forth. I love both fragrance world and I love textiles um, and any form of interior design or you know design or fashion or any of those things. So they really are complementary in my mind. Mm -hmm. and. Um, they work together and they work together. Sometimes I have the same clients for both mm -hmm. and that's happened quite a bit lately. Mm -hmm. So each time you, you create this relationship, you don't know what the next step is going to be. Mm -hmm. And the next day when you get a phone call for something, you know, all of a sudden you're making diffusers for an interior design business that you thought that they were going to order a certain amount of, of yardage. And then they turn out to really be interested in this fragrance that you that you suggested. So it's it's a nice process. I never get bored. Every day is a different is a different creative adventure. So for me, it's really this fantastic experience and a new lifestyle that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can tell that you're passionate about it. I can just sense that from you, and I love that that you're excited about creating things and your business. You know, I want to speaking of clients, I want to be definitely your next client because I just moved into a new house and I'm it's actually a blank slate right now. I put up a painting nice. and yeah, that's about it. And I kind of like the simplicity, but I definitely want to start looking into really unique textile pieces. Um, so I definitely will be contacting you after this as well. <laughs> I love fragrance. I love perfume. I, I have like a hundred different fragrances, but to have a unique fragrance to myself, that is something that I would love to have. So I'm so definitely going to be... That's fabulous. <laughs> well, when, whenever I start working with, with clients for, for textiles, one of the things that they do is that they give me um, kind of their mood board or a color palette that they, they like. Mm -hmm. And that for me triggers all kinds of things. So, you know, whatever yeah. the color palette is, there's things that can, that can go along with it, things that can really pump it up or that can be more subtle. So there's endless variations and endless, you know, wonderful creative things that can come out of it. Yeah. Definitely. So that is definitely something I will be contacting you about <laughs> next. And, you know, last but not least, I want to talk about, you know, our show is about inspiring the new generation, inspiring people. Um, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that watch this show. So I want to talk about one of the highlights you've had in your career, um, one of the biggest highlights and some of the obstacles you also face along the way and how you overcame those challenges. Well, I think that for me, the in a lot of ways, the biggest highlight was making the jump mm. from, you know, having one of these kind of plum, plum academic jobs to saying, no, I actually want to be 
you know, have my own business. I've always had an interest in business and design. I think that that jump for me was something that was very important. And I wanted to do it um, myself. I, I, I knew that I could do it and I wanted to do it. And I would encourage anybody that has ideas about how to do, you know, ideas that they want to bring to the market to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no point at which it's going to be too late. Um, but you want to start thinking about these things and then just go for it. I mean, life is short. You want to be able to have as many different um, careers and businesses and, and experiences as you can. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was um, a very significant thing and something that, um, that was not based on getting a job from someone, from an institution, which I had always had before. So you work for somebody and, you know, there's a trade-off to that. Mm -hmm. But when you work for yourself, there's also a trade-off, but you have so much more freedom and you're really doing something that you're passionate about every day. And mm -hmm. um, I love the idea of having new clients all the time, which means new projects, so you don't get bored. Mm -hmm. And each time you do something, it's you're, you're giving somebody a unique work of art that you've made and that is is also related to to the exchange that you had with a specific individual so it's a fantastic it's a fantastic thing and i think entrepreneurship for a lot of people is something that can be very very um liberating in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and you know thinking about it also within this time period when a lot of us are inside this is a good time to think about these things you know what are your next steps going to be Mm -hmm. uh, not just in terms of a, a five-year plan, but what are you going to be doing next year? And how can you create an existence for yourself where you can pivot? So no matter what's going on within the economy, you can find a way to continue and to expand your business and expand your brand in a way that's, that's positive and in a way that you really get something out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And this pandemic has given a lot of people time and time, you know, makes people think about what they're really passionate about and what they really want to do for the rest of their lives. So I, I think that's great advice because now is the time for people to, they want to become entrepreneurs. This is the time to make that jump when they have the time and um, a little bit of extra more time to think about what they want to do. So thank you so much, Anna, for being on the show today. It's been such a pleasure and honor. Your story has been very insightful and interesting. <laughs> You've had a very interesting Thank journey. you so much. Yeah, and congratulations <laughs> on all your success. Keep creating and um, making a difference with your brand. So thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.